ACS gas training, ventilation for room sealed appliances. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video I'm at Viva Training Academy and I'm with Russ here, the expert trainer, and Russ is going to go through the calculations um, for room sealed um, room sealed gas appliances or room sealed boilers or whatever room sealed appliances it's going to go through the through the ventilation through the calculations and then hopefully you'll have a, a good understanding on when you go do your ACS training then you'll know how to answer the questions and and you'll understand it better hopefully so yeah without further ado let's uh, go over to Russ thanks for that Alan uh, this morning we're going to look at uh, room shield ventilation. Uh, we're back at Viva Training Academy. Uh, hopefully we'll put some, uh, as they say, some meat on the bone. We're going to look at the uh, ventilation requirements. We're going to look at positioning, how you work that out, where you find the information, etc. Well, everything should flow on from what you've already seen in your training books and also be able to source it from other, other documents afterwards. We'll go on now, I'll show you some illustrations, I'll do some drawings and we'll uh, hopefully show you some um, an easy way of looking these, these things up. Room seal appliance ventilation. As you already you should already be aware by now, the difference between a room seal appliance and an open fluid appliance is it takes its combustion air from outside and takes it directly into the appliance. I've shown you here uh, a relatively modern type of a setup here with a fan assisted flue in a flue bringing taking your combustion products out out of flue bringing your combustion air in so all we're concerned about is cooling air in the actual compartment if it was in a room without the compartment wouldn't be a problem anyway but if it has a compartment check the manufacturer's instructions you must check manufacturer's instructions if I used a broad brush, I could almost say that majority of combis, uh, condensing boilers, etc., I would say almost all don't require com co compartment ventilation up to a certain size at least. And most domestic boilers, not a problem. But do check manufacturing instructions. Certainly with the older combination boilers, they did in the manufacturing instructions ask for, combust, for compartment ventilation. It was just something they did in the early days. So be careful, don't assume they all don't need compartment ventilation. How are we gonna work it out? Well, the first thing to remember, as I mentioned, exactly the same as uh, open flu, it's always done on total input. In other words, you don't take off any allowances for uh, advantageous air etc etc this is purely and simply cooling air for the compartment and as and exactly the same as open float we need to vent internally and or not and internally or externally remember what I said on the other one if you didn't see that one the point is you must not cross ventilate you can only ventilate internally or externally if you look at this from this point of view your charts in your books the charts in the standards the charts anywhere you look will all tell you the same information they will tell you it is internally 10 centimeters squared per kilowatt and externally it is five centimetres squared per kilowatt. So just to give you a quick little example, I've put, I've put 35 kilowatt on this combi, standard big combi there, no problem, condensing boiler, whatever. 35 kilowatt multiplied by 10 centimetres squared, I'll just write at the front here, internal, internal, would give you 350 centimetres squared of free area. Now that's high and low, high and low. 
350 centimeters squared, 350 centimeters squared. If you look at what I've put up there externally, using the same boiler, 35 kilowatts total input multiplied by 5 centimetres squared will be 175 centimetres squared and again that will be high and low. So we were here 175 centimetres squared, 175 centimetres squared. Remember what, what, what the reason for this is, internal air normally would be warmer than the external air. So you need that little bit more movement to, to keep that temperature down in the compartment. Remember again what I said, check manufacturing instructions. Majority nowadays don't need it. Majority for the last 10 years almost haven't needed it up to a certain input. But check, I won't, say, I won't emphasize it enough, Check manufacturer's instructions. It is as straightforward as it looks. Total input multiplied by 10, internally multiplied by 5, externally. A question quite often asked is what constitutes a compartment? Uh, the official line coming straight out of British Standard states uh, a player's compartment is an enclosure, I'm going to read it directly from the standard. An enclosure specifically designed or adapted to house one or more gas appliances. Um, you'll come across these in old sort of cylinder airing cupboards where they've taken the old tank out and put the boiler in. I've come, you'll come across them where you can literally walk in, two people could stand side by side or more, and it would still be technically classed as a compartment because it's closed off. There used to be a dimension but now they never specifically say a dimension they just say it's used as an enclosure for an appliance one thing to be aware of if there's more than one appliance in there are they all room sealed are they, are they a mixture be aware of that one if they're all room sealed uh, add them together again total input and then ventilate accordingly uh, if it's room sealed with other appliances, do check the manufacturing instructions, what they request. The compartment should, should be labelled, in other words, so people know to keep the door closed because it is a compartment. And obviously, if you did need ventilation in that compartment, this is something, going back to what we're looking at with this, are you going internally or externally? You can't take air for combustion from a bedroom, not for combustion, but for room sealed, it is only cooling air. But check manufacturer's instructions again on that one. The training material you've got should tell you all what I've just said. Also, if you get a chance, look at the British standards, look at anything you can see. It will all tell you the same thing, but it might just might just word it slightly different in a different publication and that can be the difference between understanding and not understanding something else i always say don't be frightened of looking in different publications anywhere online or hard copies just to round off this presentation uh, one point i'd like to just make is positioning of these vents and again all the publications say the same the vents should be as far apart as possible, as far apart as possible, uh, which gives you some scope to play with, I'll, I'll agree, but you can see where they're coming from. Uh, the farther apart they are, the more chance of circulating that air around the cupboard. Internal vents, no different to uh, external vents really, but as they tidy, obviously not closable, no mesh, all the usual, all the usual things. External vents, if it's a single wall, it could be a, uh, perhaps a, an outhouse or, a, or something like that it is. Um, it wouldn't really matter what you put it on, it's the correct size, of course. But if it is going through an external wall, be aware you still need to consider sleeving that uh, vent through the wall. Uh, it still needs to be sleeved, it's still a vent. Okay? Um, 
that should, again, read your, read your manufacturing instructions, read the publications, any comments, please come back to Alan and I'm sure we can sort something out for you. I'll hand you back over to Alan now. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Russell. If, if you've got any questions at all with regards to ventilation on room sealed appliances, please add them below. Also, if you've got any other training videos you'd like us to cover, again, please put them below and we'll try and cover what we can. And also, if you could, if you could let us know if you'd prefer us to do these videos in little short snippets like this video, or if you like the, the videos that are really long and detailed, and, and which format you would prefer because um, sometimes the long videos might be too long for people to um, yeah for people to watch so so just if you could just let us know give us some feedback below and um, I hope this video um, has been of, of some interest to to people that are training for the ACS or new people that needs to um, know about ventilation and just to bear in mind some most boilers these days you, you will not need compartment ventilation like all the new combi boilers now or i'll say most of them i won't say all just in case but most of them now you wouldn't need to have ventilation but as always you would check the installation instructions and you do that with any appliance so even older appliances nowadays most of the information you can find online so even for really old boilers and cookers or whatever you can find that information online so it's it's really good for that um yeah i'm bubbling on now but um thanks very much and please comment below please like share all that good stuff thank you